Hi everyone, Jessica, clinical psychologist with Psych Collective here with Dr. Aldris Gatis, consultant psychiatrist. And today we're going to talk about the role of sugar in mental health. So let's start with the basics, right? There is an ideal level of sugar or glucose within our bloodstream, yeah? Uh, yeah, yeah, we, 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 our body has a lot of systems in place to kind of keep our blood sugar within a certain range. Yep. Yeah, and when, when it gets out of that range, it can cause one type of problem and so forth. Yeah, it gets complicated. Okay, so what is the role specifically as to why sugar has an impact on mental health? What's actually happening there? So if I have a Mars bar, what's yep. going to happen? Okay, cool. So you have yourself a Mars bar and your blood sugar goes right out of that range. Okay, yep. that's so far so good. Like that's, that's long term, that might be a problem, but there and then for your mental health, no worries at all. Okay. okay? But your body doesn't like being out of range. Okay. okay, so it makes a lot of this stuff called insulin. Yep. Okay, and insulin essentially pushes all of that, all of that fuel into your cells. Okay, mm -hmm. to put your blood sugar back into range. Okay. All right. Now that would be fine, if that was it, that would be fine. Yeah. The problem you have is, you you sort of make you, your body's not kind of designed to be getting these huge whacks of sugar like that. Okay, so mm -hmm. it actually makes probably more insulin than it should. Right, right, okay. So then what ends up happening is your blood sugar comes down, 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 down. Now it's getting towards the lower end of that range. Yeah. Okay. And your body, you, you, that doesn't feel good. Yeah. Okay, that doesn't feel good at all. So you so feel... Is that kind of the crash sort of feeling yeah, afterwards? Okay. Yeah, you feel kind of sick. You yeah. feel kind of hungry. You feel yeah. more sensitive. You might feel shaky. Okay. You yeah. don't feel good. Okay, you don't feel good. All right. And so when you when your blood sugar is there, your body's like, well, that ain't great either. So it makes sort of hormones that are the opposite to insulin. Okay. Okay. So it starts making things like adrenaline and cortisol and glucagon and these kind of things. And that kind of pushes it back up. But when you hit this little zone here at the bottom, you feel pretty lousy. Yeah. All right. Until, if you can sort of ride through it, okay, it'll normalize again. Okay. All right. And it'll so get back in that range. That lousy kind of bit, what's, what does that look like in the context of mental health? Okay, so let's say you're someone who's got anxiety. Yep. All right, and you've just had yourself your ice cream or whatever, it's come up, and now half an hour or so later, it's down at the bottom end. Yeah. If you've got anxiety anyway, you're going to be more anxious and way more prone to have a panic attack. Okay. okay. In that context. Okay, but then I'm guessing that people who aren't aware of kind of the sugar put kind of come down could be the thing that's causing this almost agitation or sensitivity yeah. people would then probably misinterpret it as i'm really anxious why am i really anxious what's happening oh my god am i gonna have a panic attack and that sort of thing yeah. so there'd be kind of a misinterpretation or misappropriation of the cause of the sensitivity not realizing that it could actually be the come down of the sugar so sometimes when you ask people about their panic attacks and you say you know what you know can you see what triggers off your panic attack? Yeah. sometimes i'll say yes this that and the other yeah and sometimes i go i don't know like it just comes from nowhere. Yeah. But if you actually ask them, okay, well, let's go backwards. Okay. What, what, did, you, what did you eat in the hour before that? Right. You know, if there's no other trigger, that's going to be there. Not okay. always, but that's really common. But this wouldn't just be panic. This would be kind of any forms of anxiety. Yeah. So, so anxiety, so just increased anxiety. Yes. Tendency to panic. Yes. Or let's say it's, um, just part of the anxiety disorders, let's say it's someone with a, a very highly sensitive temperament, whether whether it's borderline personality or whatever you like. Trauma, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, they're going to be a lot more sensitive, so they're more likely for something to really get under their skin at that point. Okay, okay. so this could be in the context of, say, someone who's got PTSD complex trauma, yeah. where sometimes they'll get triggered, like, start a reflex. If a door bangs, sometimes they're okay door bangs next time they're really really heightened could this kind of sugar sensitivity come down be something that would have a moderating effect as yeah. to whether or not the trigger is bigger or smaller yeah but if people aren't aware of this or aren't tracking their food then it may be yeah so it came out of nowhere the, and i don't know what happened they're still going to get cued okay? yeah of course but how something's got to happen but, but whether it's a, a a big reaction to that cue or yeah. a relatively smaller reaction to that cue that might relate to where they're at Okay, okay from, so, their blood, from their blood glucose point of view. All right, so if their blood glucose is out of whack, it could be a suds at difference of, say, a suds at seven versus a suds at nine. Yeah, yeah. If they're kind of yeah, in this kind yeah. of calm down post-sugar. Yeah, yeah. So, all right, and then if 
if okay so carbohydrates as they break down turns into sugar even mm -hmm. if you're not eating sugary foods particularly carby foods will still break down into sugar have an impact on glucose right? yeah so, so that right? yeah yeah that's that's correct i mean some are worse than others. So your white breads, your pastas, your sort of low GI. And kind of highly processed. Yeah, yeah. the more processed it is, the, the, the faster release it is. Okay, yeah. all right. So if they've got kind of carby breakfast, there's going to be sensitivity, say mid-morning. Carby lunch, yeah. there's going to be sensitivity mid-afternoon. Carby dinner, sensitivity kind of yeah. before bed sort of. Yeah. Would you see that sort of pattern? In well, you, you kind can. Of mood yeah, and you can. Especially if people are really big carb eaters, you do. Okay. Yeah. And the other thing you see is they don't just have three times a day because they're getting that kind of um, that feeling of kind of hunger, sick, anxious, awful. They'll have a carby snack as well. To, because surely that would, back up. If, yeah, because that would then take away that kind of yeah. agitation. Of, yeah. And I wonder then would some people be kind of misinterpreting this crash and sensitivity for hunger cues and signals? Yeah. Well, you're hungry. Well, you're hungry. Yeah. yeah okay. Yeah. So. But then if I eat, then the feeling goes away and I'm okay again. For an hour or so. For an hour or so. <laughs> yeah. And that in itself could actually then come into kind of some of our eating disorder, binge eating sort of yeah. patterns of behaviours and stuff like that. Yeah, potentially, yeah. yeah. Yeah? Okay. So in the moment, well, kind of in within the hour or two, you've kind of got this up, down, mood swing, agitation, sensitivity sort of thing. What are some of the longer term impacts for sugar on mental health? Okay. All right, so we've talked about sort of the acute effects. Yep. And so now with the chronic effects, there's there's a couple of things. So if you're if you're chronically um, ingesting a lot of sugar, um, and it means your, your blood sugar is spending a, a fair amount of time outside of this kind of range yep. that we like, that's actually a bit damaging to organs in general. Yeah. Okay, so, I mean, if you've got diabetes, that's the most sort of severe version mm -hmm. of that, which is very damaging, okay? But you know, nevertheless, you, you have more kind of inflammation going on, more oxidative damage going on, just sort of like, it's just not a great state, okay, yeah. to be in, okay? It's, it's you know, it's, it's, it's problematic, shall we say, yeah. okay? So that can, it's just one extra stress on your body, okay? And if you're kind of teetering, right, yeah. then you're more likely to be you know, unwell than not. Okay, yeah. that's going on. So that's, yeah. So something that you've mentioned to me previously was around kind of, obviously sugar as it burns can create energy and that's where people kind of get the sugar rush. Yeah. yeah? But what you said to me previously is that kind of that burning, it's almost like it's using dirty fuel. So is it like it, it's kind of the build up in the engine of the car of kind of the muck from the dirty fuel and that's the the oxidation on the organs? Is that kind of what's happening? Let, yes. let, if we want to simplify things, let's say Very that. simplifying, yeah? yeah? yeah Whereas a cleaner form of energy as you said, kind of fat burning energy or energy burnt from kind of metabolism of fats per se is more of a cleaner energy, so it's not going to have that ongoing inflammation. But yeah. if you go back to kind of like my education from nutrition in primary school was carbs are good, fats bad with kind of the food pyramid and stuff. But if we're looking at this from in terms of clean sources of energy versus kind of dirty sources of energy, the impact on mental health, it kind of we, we need to almost kind of flip that i'm not saying fat for everyone all the time yeah. but less carbs for improved mental health yeah so the, the food pyramid i mean since that's happened we've got more cardiovascular disease more obesity more mental health problems you know, yep. like, you know a lot of bad stuff has happened from the food yeah. pyramid yeah okay so for longer term benefit on mental health we need to be looking at sugar consumption carbohydrate consumption Right. Yeah, at reducing it or at ide reducing ideally it. eliminating it. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Um, which may not be feasible for everyone to eliminate it entirely, but definitely to reduce it or to look for kind of some different sources of carbohydrates that, as you kind of said, a bit more low GI, less processed, yeah. kind of less added sugar sort of stuff. Yeah, yeah, exactly right. So anything that you can do so you don't end up with these excursions of your blood sugar up out of that range, mm -hmm. you want to do that. And the and the high, and the quicker you kind of spike that, you know, your your big plate of ice cream or your you know your your, your big whack of whatever your favourite sugary carb, mm -hmm. that's going to be a more intense impact. Okay, mm -hmm. something like a, a really you know um, whole grain, you know, un, as little processing as possible, whole fruit, that kind of thing. It still's got sugar in it, but you're not going to get that really quick upswing and downswing. Yeah. It's more of a sort of slow rise and a slow down, and you, that, that's a lot more gentle on your system. Okay, all right. So maybe for people who are presenting with feeling of kind of anxiety that seems to come out of nowhere or kind of these low moods that seem to come out of nowhere with no real identifiable trigger, would keeping a food diary be something that would be worthwhile to see if we can actually starting to track some patterns on this? Mm, of even yeah. if it's kind of, I ate this, 
what was your mood an hour later what was your mood or what, what was your anxiety what were your subs like or whatever and actually see if we can start to kind of look at this if you can um people are really good at doing that for a week all right but yeah. beyond that they, they they're not and often well, when they're doing this they start kind of behaving if you like like they're yes. you know, they're more conscious yes. as of soon as you monitor a behavior you yeah. automatically change the behavior but even if they did only record it within a week would you see a trend yeah you can you can yeah okay. it's it's worth it's worth doing especially that you, you're better off recording it sort of proactively than, than trying to get people to remember going back you know there's people won't remember i had a snack mm -hmm. at this time and i mm -hmm. felt like this at that time like you know mm -hmm. you, you need to do it proactively so that's that's probably the way to do it if you wanted to monitor that for yourself okay all right so take home message if you've got mood swings or anxiety symptoms that seem to be coming out of nowhere have a look at your diet and see whether or not and just see if there's a pattern between kind of did you eat an hour earlier and was it something carby or sugary having a look at understanding kind of that sugar will have an impact on your mood and agitation not so much at the time you're eating it but more the come down afterwards and remembering that there is an inflammatory response now we we haven't talked much about the inflammatory inflammation in the brain as a result of sugar can you comment on that a little bit more um yeah okay so Various things can promote kind of systemic inflammation, and um, when that affects the brain, it, it, it certainly can affect mood. Okay, yep. so so sugar is one of those things that can sort of promote bodily inflammation. Okay. Um, without getting into any detail, different foods can do that to different people, and it's hard to actually know. Like mm -hmm. you know, that there are these things called elimination diets that people yep. do. I, I won't go down that rabbit hole, but there's all kinds of things that can contribute to inflammation. Um, systemic inflammation and sugar is one of them. Okay, which areas of the brain will that affect? Kind of, if we're seeing this inflammation, yeah. kind of from sugar on the brain, are there certain areas of the brain that will target more than others? Well, no, it's 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 hard to know. Okay, you, you certainly if if you've got chronically high sugar intake to the point where you develop insulin resistance, um, then you definitely see that. Right. Okay. okay. So if you develop insulin resistance and look, most people have insulin resistance, most app, like if you're over 30 and you've eaten carbs all your life, chances are you've got some insulin resistance going on. Okay, now, so, but some people more than others, you know, usually you can tell because you're getting a bit overweight. Okay. Mm. That's the telltale sign okay. really. Okay. Um, certainly. And as you get older, in your forties, if you're eating a lot of carbs, you know, fifties, you know, uh, insulin resistance will creep up on you. All right. Um, now, when you've got insulin resistance, you, parts of your, they never thought your brain had got insulin resistance, but it turns out parts of it does. Yeah. Okay. Bits involved in memory. Yeah. So you can affect your memory. Okay. Okay. Bits involved in the reward pathway. So it can affect your appreciation of things and your enjoyment of things. Okay. okay? It can affect your motivation to do things. Okay. All right. So if you've got insulin resistance and, you, and all you're doing about it is taking metformin, you know, that's not doing anything to improve things for you. You know, a, okay. a break from sugar and carbs for, you know, a month or two, all right, that can turn around insulin resistance amazingly, mm -hmm. okay, amazingly. Um, so I think people, I mean, you know, if you, if you, if you, you know, you can measure your fasting level of insulin. Mm -hmm. If that's creeping up, if that's above 10 or 15, take a month or two off the carbs and the sugar, mm -hmm. all right, and then have a look at what's going on with your mood. It could completely transform things. Okay, so have you seen kind of remission of mood disorders from people being able to change their diet? Yeah, absolutely. So I've had people who have started a ketogenic diet and it's like, I don't need my meds anymore, doc. Mm. You know, so it's very powerful. Okay. Not, I mean, it's not it's the not be all and end all. It's not for yeah. everyone, yeah. but certainly something yeah. that I think we're having a growing awareness of in terms of its impact on mental health symptoms. Yes. Where kind of simply saying that your body is not producing enough serotonin and here's a tablet to fix that is an overly simplified rationale for it. Yeah. And that food could actually be having more of an impact than you're, many people are aware of. Yeah, yeah, indeed. I mean, you know, we, we've just talked about sugar and carbs. There's a ton of other things that we'll Okay, get we to might save those for another talk. Yeah. Okay, yeah. all right. So three take-home messages from this. What do you want to say? All right, um, if you're getting kind of intermittent symptoms of anxiety and distress during the day, yep. try cutting out all the processed sugars and carbs. And okay? just see what happens. See what happens, yep. all right? Okay. You know, have, have some slow burning stuff, like some wholemeal bread if you must, sure, okay? But, but see how that goes. meats, cheeses, protein. Yeah, yeah, if you can have, if you, look, if you, if you can have, you know, some, um, some cheese and some meat, if you can organize a little, you know, 
their tote box stack for yourself or something, <laughs> right? Um, just because it's got to be convenient, you know. Like yeah. What's yeah. convenient is something that you can unwrap and eat, okay? And that's going to be charging crap, right? Usually bars yeah, and, yeah, and exactly. crap like that. Yeah. So yeah, so so if you can pre you got to do, you need some preparation if you're going to be fair okay. them about this. So prepare some of that kind of stuff. So you've got a snack that's good to go that's not going to put you on that roller coaster. Yep. All right. So that's kind of that acute anxiety thing. If you've got sort of chronic mood problems where, you know, your motivation's low, maybe your memory isn't so good, you concentrate, you're not really enjoying stuff so much, you know, that could be relating to insulin resistance, okay? okay? So having a complete holiday, okay, for a month or two from sugar and carbs, I know that's not an easy thing to do. Mm -hmm. So you might need some help to accomplish that, okay? I, I know that's not an easy thing, or maybe you need to wean that down, all right? But you do that for a month or two, okay? That'll start to normalise your okay. insulin resistance. And, some and blood tests pre and post with this help. Yeah, I think a fasting insulin and a fasting blood sugar, yeah. pre and post, yeah. will will give you a really. I mean, yeah, it, I wouldn't not do it because you can't access the blood test. You know, oh, yeah, like that's course, just of kind course, of. But it's nice to have out. numbers, but yeah, yeah, um, you know, two two months on a sort of a ketogenic diet, if insulin resistance is going on, you can pretty much reverse that mm -hmm. if you're but you've got to be strict like i'm not talking like i'm doing the ketogenic diet and you're not actually doing it okay so you, you, if you're doing it fair income okay for a couple of months and n i acknowledge that the first couple of weeks can be really tough yeah all right um but if you can if you can get through that usually you'll need some help um if you can get through that what's going to happen in a couple of months to your energy to your motivation okay to your, your sort of your capacity to enjoy things mm -hmm. i mean holy cow you know, it's a, it's a, it can be transformative, mm -hmm. all right? Well worth doing. I think, well, are they all the messages? I think that we've covered most of, most okay. of that. Yeah, yeah. beautiful. All right. All right. Um, should we make a handout for this with some points? Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We'll, yeah. Okay, we'll work on that. We'll get that up over the next couple of weeks. Uh, find us on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, and the website, thesitecollective.com. Leave us comments, feedback, or hit us up if you want to share some of your resources or references that you found, or if you've got any questions for future videos. Thanks, guys. See you later. Thanks a lot. Leave a comment if you think this is all nonsense, or if you agree. Let us know. We're interested. Okay. Thanks, folks.